You may know them for their wood glues, but did you know Titebond also has a complete selection of construction adhesives? Designed for a variety of applications, Titebond's adhesives make any building or home improvement project a breeze with their high-performing and durable formulas. These adhesives are trusted by the professional, providing squeak-free subfloor installations, long-lasting retaining walls, and even fastener-free feature walls. Check out Tightbond's construction adhesives at tightbond.com, including their newest award-winning adhesive, Tight Grab Plus. As natural wood species go, redwood is in a class of its own. A sustainable alternative to tropical hardwoods, redwood is grown and harvested to the highest environmental standards in the world. Named for the dark red heartwood at the center of the tree, redwood imparts natural beauty, warmth, and durability to interior and exterior building applications, including decking, fencing, paneling, siding, exposed beams and timbers, pergolas, and other shade structures. To learn more about redwood from Humboldt Sawmill, please visit GetRedwood.com. Uh, Nick writes... Hey podcast, I've been listening to you guys for a year now and have caught up on most of the back episodes. I really appreciate all the knowledge you share. I'm hoping the knowledgeable podcasters can tell me if this is a decent idea or not. I'm planning on building a single story house with both a conditioned attic and a conditioned crawl space. This would be an Oregon climate zone four. I have the idea that I could skip running ducting to every room if my air handler was in the attic and was ducted to the crawl space. I would put registers in the floor and use the damper and use dampers on them to control the airflow to each room. Registers slash vents in the ceiling would allow return air back into the attic. The only problem I can think of is leakage uh, in the crawl space due to the excessive pressure. I could cut in extra registers in the floor of each room to help mitigate this. Obviously, I would pay a lot of attention to the air sealing of the crawl space. Is this feasible? Where should I should the makeup air come from? I was thinking the crawl space. I was thinking the crawl space since exhaust fixtures are usually near the ceiling, maybe into the ducting that goes into the crawl space. Am I onto something or delusional? Uh, it seems like sound traveling from room to room is another issue I thought of. I was thinking exposed rock wool bats in the attic and crawl space would help absorb some of the sound. Thanks for all the advice you share, Nick. Okay, uh, Ian, what do you think about uh, Nick's plan for using his crawl space for HVAC distribution? Well, I think it was probably the cutting edge back in like 1900. <laughs> I, I think the same thing. Why? Why, why, we, why do we do something different now? Well, because we, we understand airflow and we understand how to create ductwork to steer air around a building. Uh, I, I think he's probably trying to do something DIY and avoid having to do ductwork. And if that's the idea, there, there are you know packaged HVAC things, uh, mini splits, uh, being the chief among them where you could you could do a modern HVAC without having to resort to uh, trying to eliminate ductwork entirely from your house, which is what it sounds like he's trying to do. What do you think, Grant? I agree. Um, I, I, it sounds... Well, I, I mean, let me restart. <clears throat> I agree. I think that if you if you're going to go into putting an air handler in, it needs to be for it needs to be ducted as a forced air system. Um, if you know, at, at, to Ian's point, if it's something you're DIYing, you're trying to be able to do yourself and not have to run duct work. Um, certainly look into you know mini splits, you know packaging things like that, which we know work well in like point almost like single point applications. Um, I just can't see it working. Would it work to some extent? Probably. You know, it did work, you know, a hundred years ago, but I don't think he would get the control he wanted or the comfort he wanted out of it. That's it. Uh, and Ian alluded to it. Uh, gravity uh, forces, it, uh, furnaces, as they are often described, was a giant heating plant in the basement and you'd have holes cut in the floor and the heat would kind of convect up and uh, there'd be a giant uh, return air grill uh, somewhere in a central hallway in the you know lowest level of the living space. And uh, it would make its way back there and kind of circulate. It would keep the pipes from freezing, but I guarantee there wasn't uh, comfort in every room. Uh, and if there was, it was because there was a, 
you know, ginormous radiator uh, in later years that would you could, you know, turn up. I was thinking specifically about the cooling part uh, part of it being in Climate Zone 4 in Oregon. He doesn't say exactly where he is in Oregon, but uh, I it's believe hot. climate. What's that? It gets hot. It gets really hot. And I would think Climate Zone 4 means he's not on the uh, uh, Pacific coast of Oregon, right? Because isn't that a, a marine climate designation uh, once you get into Oregon? So he's going to have a lot of hot summers to deal with. And I I would default to some kind of a, a prepackaged mini split if he's intent on DIY. Uh, or if he's building a simple enough house, you know, find a good HVAC contractor that, you know, could could do that duct work for you. Uh, duct work is relatively simple in a, a small enough house. Uh, the, the fundamental problem here is the conditioned air, the heated or cooled air, doesn't necessarily go where you want it to. It doesn't work right. like the smart arrows in fine home building drawings, right, Grant? It, right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. There's a lot of uh, uh, factors that uh, determine, uh, you know, heating and cooling loads, windows, wall construction, uh, you know, a myriad of exposure, uh, how the wall assembly is constructed, its color, all these things weigh into how much hot or cool you need to make the space comfortable. And if you don't have a way to direct it or throttle it back, it, it's very unlikely you're going to have a comfortable space unless it's tiny. Yeah. One of the talks that I went to at JLC Live was, uh, from Ross Truthui, and uh, he's got just great diagrams of simple uh, ducting systems for a house to, you know, whether you're delivering ventilation with a ERV or you're just doing a simple forced air system, they don't have to be wickedly complex. No, especially if uh, Nick is going to put this in his attic, right? You have an air handler with a trunk line. It should get smaller as it gets toward the end uh, based on, you know, how much air you're removing from it with the takeoffs. And then they're run along the attic floor. If you're using flex duct, as would be uh, common, uh, it has to be pulled tight to get, you know, good airflow. Uh, Wait, then you can't like pretzel it up into a pile and just have everyone it. wants to do that. I don't know why. <laughs> I That's saw not that in okay. one of the JLC live seminars last week was a, a ductopus. Yeah. I uh, I will say hopefully Nick, you're if you're gonna put this in the attic, it's a conditioned attic. Hopefully he did say that. It. He said he said yeah, okay. that. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Hopefully he's not putting it in the middle of his in the middle of his vented attic. <laughs> Is what go ahead. Isn't Ian. best practice with the crawl spaces to try and keep them not part of your house? Uh, you know, vent them to the outside and then insulate the the floor of the structure. Wouldn't that if you were doing a new build? Ian just launched us into another podcast yeah, episode. That's a loaded uh, question. It, <laughs> yeah, that's a great question and fundamental to design, right? Uh, you know, we want duct work in the conditioned space. If you're on a slab or whatever, you know, the attic is really your only right. uh, choice. And, you know, there are ways to to keep it in the conditioned space. You either condition the attic or you make some kind of box to house the, the duct work and the equipment in, in, the, in the space. And it can be in a closet or we recently showed a plenum truss and fine home building uh, in a you know, ask the experts questions. So there are ways to do it. Um, you know, I think folks would say that a, a, a unconditioned vented attic with loose fill insulation on the ceiling uh, of the second floor or first floor of the one story house is a very forgivable, very forgiving and easy to build assembly that's very affordable. Um, you know, conditioned assemblies are more expensive. Grant, you're nodding. You agree? Yep. Yeah. And, and to Ian's point, uh, you either have to treat your crawl space completely out of the envelope or it needs to be completely in the, in the envelope and treat it like a short basement. Yeah. Um, I have always thought the short basement treatment is the right way to go for a crawl space because then you can use it to distribute your mechanicals. Um, but yes, to, that's <laughs> like you said to your question, it's either one or the other. It, it, you definitely don't want it to play both sides because you won't, you know, if you 
try to keep it in your space or you run things in the space, but you don't treat it as conditioned, it just gets yucky. We've had a lot of luck recently with tight uh, urban sites where we're putting a small addition on the back of the house that we'll actually just use helical piers uh, and then we'll use some deep floor trusses that allow us to get some mechanicals inside the floor trusses but still have an unconditioned uh, crawl space underneath the addition. We found that eliminates the concrete work. It, it, it's great for a site where maybe you only have six feet wide of access to the backyard. Yeah. And the other, the other thing to remember there is if anybody's thinking about doing that, you need to somehow figure out your continuity of your air barrier across right. the bottom of your floor. Yep. So like Mission you critical. either need to sheath the bottom of the trusses and like zip and tape them. Cause the thing is now your, your crawl space, it's literally just, it's like a pier and beam foundation. Yep. It's, you have to figure out your air barrier at a different spot. I could recommend a fantastic fine home building article, Air Sealed and on Piers, which is one we uh, commonly refer to. It is a great assembly. And uh, you should look at it if you're if you're unfamiliar uh, because uh, you kind of have to build the building in an unusual order. But once once you see it, it makes a lot of sense. What do you guys think about that uh, assembly? Is that similar to what you've done, Ian, where you build a floor, sheet it, and then put it in place? Yeah, just think of it as a... a super thick exterior wall tipped on its sheathed face yeah do you do you sheath it upside down or do you flip the floor uh after it's sheathed no you build the floor and then somebody crawls under there and draws the short straw and sheaths it i was gonna ask how you how you decide who gets to do that it's horrible <laughs> job <laughs> team skinny gets to go under there and do it like it depends on how close it is to great i guess how horrible that would be have you done this grant um no no i i was involved in the design of one um but still hasn't gotten built that was like two years ago and then the client decided not to move forward with it but it was going to be a sunroom same thing it was going to be on piers uh either board piers or helical piles um and we were going to sheath right across the bottom of the floor system and then tie that right into the zip coming up the walls basically making a a green box they got a cheaper contractor grant is my guess no well. no it's no <laughs> no they're actually uh related so <laughs> they did not they just uh decided not to move forward they've been hiding that point. from you this whole time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't there's always someone there. cheaper until it's a relative yeah <laughs> um Last night, I was watching a, a rerun of How It's Made. If you guys are unfamiliar, this is a cable show that just goes to a manufacturing plant and shows how something is constructed. And one of the things that they were showing, I just happened to tune in, was a HUD combed uh, house, uh, a single wide mobile home uh, that Mike and I have talked about on the past. And uh, they literally build it backwards. Uh, anyone who is familiar with conventional stick frame construction would be completely blown away. They start with the poly vapor retarder that's the belly of the thing and put the insulation layer, then the frame, then the floor. They put the cabinets and, and flooring in before the walls because, right, why wouldn't you if the thing's in a factory? It was mind-blowing. It's just like totally rethinking the whole way we build houses. Have and you then guys you ever have seen to what? ship it. What's that? And then you have to ship it somewhere. Uh, the last scene of the, you know, segment was it getting towed out of the factory to go to its, uh, you know, uh, mobile home court somewhere. Crazy. Speak, speaking of old, old shows, I just watched one last night, too. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, it used to be on History Channel, Modern Marvels. Yeah. That show, man, and it just came up on Hulu. And uh, that was like when I was a child, like. I love that show, <laughs> like watching everything that was on there. So it's crazy. Like it's crazy to go back. Some of these two, I remember like at the time think, wow, that's so cool. And now you're like, wow, these are 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And you look at them again. It's, it's, it's crazy how technology has evolved. Uh, yeah. And even the changes in residential construction, which is notoriously slow to adapt has had, uh, a sea change in in recent years with efficiency and uh the thing i've been noticing le lately is the more focus on indoor air quality which seemed to be a, a 
uh, side effect, forgive the bad pun, of COVID. Uh, and like as some suddenly people became far more aware of filtering indoor air and uh, air exchange. So we're looking at it that. It was all over JLC Live. Yeah, sure. Indoor was. Air quality. Yeah, yeah. I saw uh, a lot of a lot of people carrying their uh, indoor air quality meters around with them. Yeah. I almost pulled the trigger on one of those things after you coming. You need a big one that you could put on a chain like Flavor Flav's clock <laughs> that you could just walk around with, Patrick. I think oh, my God. Be a good look for you. I'm totally doing that. <laughs> my own carbon dioxide uh, production, yeah. though, would uh, frighten people away. Um, I want to remind folks before we leave go, uh, the – BS and beer symposiums are coming up to a city near you. Uh, totally worth your time. The uh, proceeds benefit Keep Craft Alive, and uh, you'll meet some amazing people. So uh, Kansas City, September 9th and 10th. Philadelphia, October 7th and 8th. Cincinnati, November 5th and 6th. And Fine Home Building will be at those shows, and uh, we hope to see you there. Please say hello if you're uh, attending. It was wonderful to meet the folks at JLC Live who listen to the podcast. Uh, uh, super fun to meet you. Thank you very much for introducing yourselves. Well, thanks, guys. That was fun. As always. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks to Ian, Grant, and Andres for joining me, and thanks to all of you for listening. Please remember to send us your comments, questions, and suggestions to fhbpodcast at finehomebuilding.com, and please like, comment, or review us. However you're listening, it helps other folks find our podcast. Stay safe, everyone. Keep craft alive. Happy building.